A reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 31, verse 17. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. All right, first and foremost, we want to start this lesson off by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. We want to give double honors to the head apostles, to the elders, bishops, and teachers of great millstone who rule well and teach well across the four winds with sound doctrine, to the like-minded brothers that are under the umbrella, pushing this truth and sincerity all in one accord, risking their lives and freedoms to do so. Shalom. Hey, shalom, shalom, Israel. Salakia, we don't have the, uh, you know, the setup to, uh, you know, have our face on the screen there, you know, in the little bottom right corner, but through the spirit, Lord willing this be edifying to the hope we elect and let's keep pushing on this truth till we get up out of here mm -hmm. that's right that's right so side, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect the tabernacle of david the so-called negroes latinos native americans haitians west indians israelite foreigners who's, who are scattered abroad those who derive from the sea line of our forefather jacob through abraham and isaac you make up the 12 tribes of israel that the bible speaks of may you seek repentance and salvation in these latter days now like the akbana just said you know this is a joint lesson all right so uh, I don't want to die, Lord willing, this will be edifying, and exhorting, and comforting to the hopeful elect of Israel. I'm going to repeat that from Psalm 31 and 17. It says, Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, Yahweh Bashim El Shai, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. All right, so those who are ashamed of this word, of this truth, and they're not going to be calling on the names of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai. That's right. All those scoffers, mockers, those that that claim that uh, we're wasting our time, those that don't believe in this truth and that we are at the end here, uh, they're going to be put to shame, man. Mm -hmm. That's because right. Because of their unbelief. What does the scripture say? Let all the unfaithful die in their unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. That's right. But they're going to be silenced by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're going to go down and get the judgment of the wicked, which is Esau Vedum, the self proclaimed white man, the red man, the devil the Bible speaks of. All right. And all the other then they're going to get that judgment here in these latter days come on come on it's like those uh those epic uh movies man you know when when the final impact scene happens you know the the movie just everything goes silent you know right when the action's hitting mm -hmm. and that's how it's going to be man you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. their, their worst fear is going to come upon them and every word that the, they heard of the prophets and of, of this uh you know gospel they're going to be thinking about man Kind of, yeah, it was the scripture saying, roughly paraphrasing, every idle word will be used against them. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind, kind. Uh, every flashback of them scoffing against this word, against the prophets, mm -hmm. they're going to be uh, having those reruns in their mind right when this destruction is about to hit. That's right. Psalm 31 and 18. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. And there's a lot of people out there who are going to mock and scoff and scorn and speak falsely, you know, create false narratives God. against our people, against the men of the Lord. God, and this, these damn devils, these Edomite elites, man, the, you know, the um, Illuminati, so to speak, mm -hmm. their lying lips are going to be put to silence, man, by Yahweh Bashim Shah and this truth being uh, uh, undeniable, speaking for itself, this prophecy at, at these end days. And, and these damn devils are going to, they're going to uh, be fleeing, man. They're going to be fleeing and going into their doomsday vaults. And, and they're, they're no longer even going to be uh, speaking to the people, to the civilians out there. They're just going to go hide and leave everybody to fend them for themselves out in chaos out here, man. But mm -hmm. these guys are going to uh, take off and flee and be nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's real quick. They're not going to be having their, their speeches, their, their conferences, press conferences and whatnot. That's right. Just for edification, we'll pull out this for contemptuously. Strong's H, 937. Booze. Booze. That's right, so contempt. And, and Esau of Edom, he's full of that booze, man. That's right. That's right, man. Got that Got that freaking uh, that wine, you know, making everyone drink from the wine of her wrath. That That's right. Mother Harlots, Babylon, America. Spiritually, Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually, Egypt. That Babylonian juice, man. That's right. That booze. That's right. Coming in from uh, contempt, 
contemptuous, right? Springing from evil, from prosperity, from judgment, disrespect, contemptually despised, shamed. God, and, and they, they, um, you know, they they love the the evil man more than they do the good out here, man. Mm -hmm. You know, they despise the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, His commandments, mm -hmm. our heritage, and that's why Esau beat them, and these nations have formed the confederacy against our people. That's pursuing to the book of Psalms. That's right. So this article right here, July 5th, 2022, year of our Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, turning up, as was coined by Elder Apostle Tahar. Okay. Just uh, coming in on this article, came across this morning. So the European Parliament overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly ratifies landmark tech laws, right? So just a short article says the European Parliament on Tuesday ratified landmark laws that will more closely regulate big tech and curb illegal content online as the EU seeks to bring order to the internet, quote unquote, wild west. So, hey man, so ushering in these uh, policies and, and these uh, legislations that are going to ultimately bring in the famine of the word pursuant to Amos chapter 8 verse 11. Con, con, and, and they're using a lot of these uh, these you know, false guises. These, these things yeah. that are happening on a, on a mass scale. Uh, you know, as we just saw what happened the other day mm -hmm. in Illinois, man, with yep. that uh, parade. Yep. But these things are going to be happening to uh, bring down the internet, man. To uh, bring down the truth and to uh, regulate and, and silence this word, man, from coming out, mm -hmm. you know, claiming that the internet has become a wild west, but this is all order out of chaos, man, orchestrated, mm -hmm. you know, to use people like that, that clown, whatever his name was. But, Bob, uh, Robert Primo, Cremo, 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 that's Primo. what it, Cremo. Yeah, yeah, and he was, uh, you know, making videos um, on YouTube and whatnot and, and utilizing the internet, and, and they're going to heavily use that as a as a reason to um, bring about this famine of the word God. and God. Um, you see this wild west and, and it's a funny uh, term that they use because it's so uh, it's so uh, hypocritical man especially when they're using things like this uh, new gun uh, bill and whatnot making it uh, to where people can carry concealed weapons and whatnot and they're really uh, turning that this place into a wild west man mm -hmm. but then they try to uh twist it and use it in a backwards type of way upside down way to uh pretty much come up against this word and, and come up against the the freedom of speech and whatnot man god mm -hmm. god exactly man with all these people developing policies and and governance boards and things as such man kind oversight of, boards kind of yeah. trying to take down TikTok because yeah. uh too many uh farmers are speaking out too yeah. many people are, are bringing out this truth and they're trying to say it's a threat to national security because China is, is, is has access to certain things and so on and so forth. Got so got they know, a lot of false pretenses that they're putting out. They're confusing the people and, and continuing to use this. But ultimately, we know that their main target is the word, this truth. Khan and Esau is trying to uh, he's he's grasping for, for air, man. He, he knows his time's done, man. And he's trying whatever he can do to come up against the prophets, man. Okay. I just seen uh, uh, the brother Bakar Moth out of New York, man. He mentioned that he had a strike on his main channel because of a video that was three years old, man. That was uh, uh, showing slides, picture slides of a lesson on, on going back to um, Jake and slavery and having pictures. And they try to give him a strike um, under, under the... Um, the policy of uh, self-harm quote unquote quote yeah. unquote yeah. but it was showing pictures of what these damn wicked devils these Edomites the, the red men did to our people during slavery man mm -hmm. that's right and, and, and they tried to uh, appeal it and it got denied man but th these damn devils man they're you know going back three years on brothers channels this and that and to uh, pretty much bring down this truth from going out but hey the lord he he He's unstoppable, man. This truth is going out, and there's going to be no denying this truth, man. That's right. They're so bad. They're going as far as trying to change that term, um, I believe, here in the States into, like, quote-unquote, involuntary relocation or something like that. You know, they're trying to they're trying to dub it, you know, something else other than captivity. Right. But, yeah, that's, you know, this devil's been revealed. Uh, the wicked's been revealed with the brightness of his coming as pursuing to the uh, book of us. Uh, Thessalonians, I believe it's Second Thessalonians. Yeah, so going back yeah. in 
So just tying back into this, you know, this is ultimately, again, legislation policies that are being drawn up to bring on the famine of the word. You know, a lot of different, they're going to take a lot of different angles, all right, to, to shut down the unicorn, to shut down the internet and, and these, uh, you know, these platforms, you know. So continuing on here, it says, uh, you know, it says, MEPs approve the final versions of the Digital Markets Act focused on ending monopolistic practices of tech giants and the Digital Services Act which toughens the scrutiny and consequences for platforms when they host banned content. So, right, so again, if you get pop hosting quote unquote banned content, all right, whatnot, then you're gonna get popped for it. There's gonna be consequences, whether they be monetary, financial consequences, or anything, usually that's what it boils down to, right? Okay, so, okay. so they're not gonna wanna have that type of content on, on their, uh, you know, on their platforms, man. So they're gonna have to go along, get along, man. They're gonna have to abide by whatever Big Brother says. Uh, and, and it's not even really taking down uh, monop monopoly of tech giants. It's more so just having those few that are in power controlling it all, but under their guidelines of what they can host, you know, what they are allowed to be uh, set on there, man. So basically just um, pulling in the reins on, on those few tech giants that control everything on the Internet, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's you know, right. It uh it really uh reminds me of that movie or that book, The Giver. You know, The Giver. Um, brothers can you know check that movie out or the book. It originates from a, a good book, but basically about the government. You know, uh, creating a a new world where it's all conformity. You know, everyone's conformed to the government and and what they say goes. And they try to hide the past, you know, the past world, um, memories and people. Pretty much these children are, are given to certain uh, people to be their parents and they're not even their, their birth parents and whatnot, but everything is pretty much a, a lie, man. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so that term MEP uh, goes into members of the European Parliament. So just a very clarification here. But yeah, man, they, in that movie, though, in that book, they, they got, like, pretty much a whole government system that that if anybody goes out of that conformity, they delete them, man. Or they're, they're quick to, um, you know, take them out. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to be coming here in these latter days, especially with that uh, social credit score system and whatnot. Now, so continuing on here, it says, with the legislative package, the European Parliament has ushered in a new era of tech regulation, says German MEP Andreas Schwab, a key backer of the laws. Sorry, man. So that's what they're looking to do. Ultimately, their main target, shut down the word. Uh, this is the book of Psalms, um, chapter 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will on my power. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. And that's how we uh, show our love and our obedience to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. He said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. So it is our delight to do the will of the Most High because we were seeking to please the Most High and we're seeking his uh, tender mercies, the sure mercies of David as, as we rebuild the, the tabernacle of David as of old. So it is our delight to please the Heavenly Father because we're seeking that reward. We're seeking salvation, and it's, uh, you know, it's to um, pretty much have us be a, a holy people, to remember who we are, where we came from, you know, being kings, pr uh, princes, judges upon the earth, man, and uh, that's our delight, to please the Heavenly Father. I'm going to go down to uh, Psalms 49. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation, lo, I have not refrained my lips. Oh, Yahweh Bashem Shai, thou knowest. Mm -hmm. So we have preached righteousness amongst our people. You know, we go out there on the altar preaching the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai amongst our people, compelling them to come in. And we have not held back our lips preaching this word with truth and sincerity, man. You know, not holding back the, our sword from blood, you know, serving it raw, man. Serving it, um, you know, unfiltered, man. And the Lord knoweth our, our labors, our works, our heart, man. It says, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Mm 
Mm-hmm. That's right. And this word is an offense. This word is, uh, you know, condemns the wicked. And we're preaching it, man. We're serving it raw. And we know that, uh, you know, we're going to be hated for this truth. But yet we still do what's necessary to, um, you know, to get this truth out and to deliver it to those who are, are you know, predestined to receive it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right, man. So we're going to try to flip that investment and That's increase right bring forth ripe fruit that's right and we do it with faithfulness man we're seeking the salvation not only of ourselves but of those that hear the word okay right. this is the book of exodus chapter 23 and verse 1 it says thou shall not pray uh, slakia thou shall not raise a false report put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness so right. we know with these policies legislation things that are being drawn up against the believers you know to they're to trying to develop things to where people are going to be you know dropping dimes you know snitching each other out on, on certain things um you know falsely they're, they're trying to entice people to be false witnesses and and to declare unrighteous things man against against those who are you know standing up for for the truth man God, and that's why the scriptures always talk about um being circumspect you know mm-hmm. being um being cautious you know mm-hmm Okay. And we don't try to go out there and, um, you know, and bring unnecessary uh, blame to the ministry and unnecessary uh, heat to ourselves, so to speak, man. Okay. Exactly. You're seeing that here in the we States. We've got to be prudent, man. Mm-hmm. And, right. um, because we know that the wicked, they, they seek it to slay the righteous, man. You know? Uh, we were sent forth as sheep amongst wolves. So... Uh, we know that many are going to try to raise that false report. Many are going to uh, come in and try to, um, you know, try to uh, conspire against you, man, for preaching this truth. Mm-hmm. But it says, uh, you know, that thou shalt not follow multitudes of evil, man. So, hey, we're going to continue to uh, push on and, and do what we need to do, what's necessary. But we know that that for our people, man, raising that false report, that there's going to be a, a heavy uh, punishment that they're going to have to face, man, for for coming up against this truth and coming up against the prophets. Yeah, and that's something that, uh, you know, that's a scary thing. But we know that many people in these latter days are going to be, um, you know, pushed to do that, man, as we as we were told by Yahweh Shai, man. You know, said, a man's foes shall be those of his own household. So... We have to just continue to to push on and just be prudent. Brothers God, brothers and sisters, we got to be prudent. And what we talk about with certain people that are especially of the world and to, you know, stay uh, stay low key out here, man. You know, only uh, only share with those that are, are of the spirit, man. Those that have the faith. What does it say? Uh, the scriptures say about uh, cast not thy pearls unto swine. Mm-hmm. Kind of, because yeah. they'll turn and rend you mm-hmm. and that, right. that means uh, they'll come and attack you that's right and that's why we can't give the you know give what is holy unto the dogs man mm-hmm. yeah i believe the roughly paraphrase in scriptures also say um seek those that as be like yourself or see be like you uh when we told ezra mm-hmm. kind, yeah. kind. so we have to seek like-minded individuals mm-hmm. you know kind of, that was the angel talking to ezra yeah mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah, this is uh, the book of Exodus 23 and 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So let's go into the term rest, edification here. Strong's age, 5186. Nachet. Nachet. Second entry, Nata, Nata. All right, to stretch out, to offer. Okay, it also says to bend, to turn, incline. Okay, so don't be inclined, right? Let's go back to this now. God, and there's no stretching out this truth to fit whatever you want to fit, you know? This truth is simple, it's plain, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it's, it's not according, it, it's playing upon tables for the those that are in the spirit to receive it, man. And uh, what does it say uh, about it being a uh, uh, simple man? You know, but the simple can't receive it. But this truth is, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna find that out. Kind, of, kind. Of. So just saying, uh, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, right? So there's gonna be a lot of people who are giving offers, being enticed, you know, being offered this and that, you know, monetary goods, you know, resources, you know, especially in the days to come where everything's going to be controlled by the governmental bodies. All right. UBI, government handouts, things like that. You know, more and more people are going to have, you know, inclinations to do wickedly, man, against their own people, but especially in particular those against the the men and women of the truth, man, the believers, the Akim and the Akwath of Yasharala. Okay. There's going to be a lot of people who are put in tough positions, man, because, you know, they're, uh, you know, those who are standing up for the truth, obviously, we pray that the hedge of protection, the provisions and blessings be bestowed upon them until the return of our Lord, Hamashiach, Yahweh and the holy angels. However, there's going to be a lot of people that are being put to the test and they're going to be, you know, really going to have to watch the surroundings. And, and you know, as the scriptures say, be, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Because there's going to be a lot of unbelievers who are not of this truth, okay? And, and they're going to be turning against one another, you know? As the scriptures also say, you know, I've come to uh, set a man at variance with his, uh, you know, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, you know, you know, so on and so forth, man. So I don't want to butch that scripture. But the point is, there's going to be that separation, man. There's going to be that division, you know? And uh, again, we're going to have to be put to the test. And, and a lot of people, man, are going to fail that test. The two-thirds of our people, the wicked of our people are going to turn, all right? Just like in China, you have, you know, there's, um, you know, basically offerings of, of uh, monetary, you know, uh, basically incentivizing, you know, incentives for people to turn against their family members and turn against others who are, you know, basically against what their governmental bodies have planned and, and, and the agenda they're pushing. You're seeing that here in, the, in Babylon, America, the U.S., when, when it comes to that, quote unquote, you know, extremism and whatnot. OK, they, they have, uh, you know, policies and litigation and things like that drawn up. For people to uh, you know drop down on, on family members, okay, and, and uh, you know so a lot of people are going to be doing that falsely. Kind, kind. So yeah, man, just to uh, finish up on that thought, man. But yeah, a lot of people they they try to stretch out this truth. You know, they don't want to rest judgment. They they try to uh, twist the truth to uh, fit as many people as they can. You know, to um, make it smooth. You know, uh, speak smooth sayings and not not. Uh, you know, let people know what it is, man, that, that there's going to be, um, you know, slavery. There's going to be captivity coming for Esau of Edom and these heathen, that there's going to, that America is going to be destroyed. You know, they don't want to uh, speak about these prophecies, man, but that that's part of them stretching the truth, man, you know. But, um, you know, resting that judgment, man, because those things need to be spoken about. Prophecy needs to be spoken about. And that's why you got many of these uh, people that are in, in love with that uh, Christianity, man, because that's not the truth, man. You know, they love that uh, simplicity that, that it has, man, um, to where they don't have to put in the work, man. You know, that, that come as you are, spirit, do as thou wilt. But um, just wanted to... Uh, close up on that with uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33 and it says for the most high is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all churches of the saints and that's right the saints being the the elect being the hopeful elect man so the the most high he's not the author of confusion man you know there's there's one truth there's one pure doctrine man and the elders upon great millstone on down they're speaking that truth man they have this doctrine. That's right. Yeah, so just going back to the article here, um, you know, again, they're going to use a lot of different angles, you know, to justify their means. So this is uh, coming out of Insider Paper. Okay, this says Russian lawmakers toughen legislation on foreign media. Okay, this is just last week when it was released. It says Russian lawmakers on Thursday approved legislation that will make it easier to shut down foreign media amid Moscow's offensive in Ukraine. 
The law also makes it easier to temporarily suspend the work of Russian media accused of spreading quote unquote dangerous information and discrediting the country's armed forces. Right. So you're going to get a lot of these people who are, um, you know, in these countries, especially in who are active in military conflict and whatnot, who are using this as, as justification, as means to shut down different platforms uh, and media, you know, um, you know, media, I guess, sources, if you will. OK, so there's going to get a lot of uh, you're going to get a lot of that. And of course, with Babylon, you know, and, and contributing America contributing to this proxy war as are a lot of different countries contributing to this proxy war the conflict between Russia and Ukraine right now you know they they may also take this same angle you know things that are uh, you know they are conflict to their quote unquote national interest and things as such okay that they are that may seem like, uh, as if they are discrediting their um, you know the government governing bodies okay you're going to get a lot of different people taking uh, these countries, man, the powers that be that take different angles like this, again, to to ultimately shut things down. But we know, again, what the main target is, but they're going to try to use a lot of different, you know, means to justify how, how to shut things down altogether. All right. So. Yeah, man, it says it here. Um, and it says it here down further it says that the legislation also allows prosecutors to suspend for up to three months the work of any Russian media accused of disseminating information considered dangerous, quote unquote, lacking respect for society, the state or the Constitution and discrediting the army. Right. So a few other things tied up in there too: lacking respect for society, the state or the Constitution. Right. So there's a few other things that they tied into there and sewed into that. That way um, they can take, you know justify again punishing and or shutting things down things as such okay so it says here if media outlets repeatedly violate the law they will be shut down said the lower house of parliament okay so the point being they're going to shut things down and there's going to be consequences there's going to be penalties for people who are violating this man you know even down further goes on to say um it says in March, Russia passed into law prison sentences of up to 15 years of spreading false information aimed at discrediting its military forces. So, right, so there's going to be people who get locked up for this truth. Kind of like, people get put away for this word. You know, if that's uh, starting in Russia, that will eventually be spread out across all the world. But mm -hmm. that's always a sign of war, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that the this war is going to continue to um, grow and become uh, the third world. Mm -hmm. But that's always a, a sign of war when these governments crack down on, on their, their reporting, what's going uh, out, and that type of information threatening to uh, lock people up, mm -hmm. reporters and whatnot, being held uh, hostage, being uh, killed. And that's something that's going to continue to increase uh, upon these latter days. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it's the book of Second Peter, chapter two and verse twelve. It says, but these, okay, so more. This is more so speaking on our people, man, false prophets and, and things as such. But it, it it can also apply to to the situation at hand here. It says Second Peter two and twelve it says, but these as natural brute, brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Yeah, so a lot of people might speak into things that they don't know, that they don't understand. That's right. A lot of these two-third Jakes are natural brute beasts, just as their father, the devil, man. You know, following their daddy Esau, the wicked, and they become just as wicked or it exceeded the wicked. Mm -hmm. That's right. But these are natural brute beasts made to uh, be destroyed, you know. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. So they're speaking evil of the word of, of, of their own people, man. You know, the two thirds are doing so when they vilify and demonize the prophets. You know, the men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the true men, the men who are preaching this truth on the one accord across the four winds, man. They're being vilified and, and demonized, man. And uh, with these falsehoods, these false narratives, you know, these, these proverbs, bywords, and, and labels such as quote unquote black Hebrew Israelites, all right, all that's falling in madness, man. So they like the Akbanan just said, yeah, they're gonna, you know, they're speaking evil of these things, and they're gonna ultimately utter, they're gonna perish in their own corruption, as will all these other, you know, heathen and, uh, you know, Esau of Edom, you know, damn devil. There's Proverbs, 
chapter 28 and verse 4. Now it says, They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. And so you get men of the law, of the word, uh, men of the law who are upholding the word, the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability while we're in this flesh and in this captivity. And you're going to get a lot of people who buck up against the truth. God, you see a lot of these simple-minded jakes, man. They, they praise the wicked, you know. They look up to all these people that that may uh, gain riches off of doing uh, wicked deeds, man. Selling out for Esau of Edom. And, and they praise and, and look up to these damn clowns, man. But but they contend with those that, that try to up, uphold the, the ways of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Those that are trying to, um, you know, to build upon this truth, man. And mm -hmm. they try to contend with it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that. They can't contend with the truth, man. Mm -hmm. Bashim Yahushai and his men, you know, these damn devils can't, can't uh, fight against the truth, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got a lot of those simp jakes, you know, two-thirds, man, and everyone out there bucking up against the truth, man, trying to stand up for the ABC, the alphabet gang. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to stand up for the, for the, uh, you well, know. What does the scripture say? They can't do nothing, uh, against the truth but for it gone exactly you know? man so hey they're, they're picking the they're, they're hopping on putting money on the, the losing team man mm -hmm. you know we've got all our money all our money's invested in, and we, we're putting it all on the line for you how about you know shy because we know that, that that he's already got the victory man mm -hmm. that's right man and we just pray to uh to make it man be part of that uh, team you know that he chooses us to make the team man that's right pray to be on that squad you know because again you got a lot of our people are standing up for madness you know whether it be the upset marching and protesting because of this roe versus wade overturnment overturning or like i said standing up for the alphabet gang all right so on and so forth man so standing up for wickedness man there's proverbs 28 and 5 it says evil men understand not judgment but they that seek the Lord, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, understand all things. Amen. So through the scriptures, filtered through the Holy Spirit, through the word of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, we are seeking that understanding, or the understanding, you know, that, that increase in knowledge and wisdom and understanding through the fear of the Lord. Okay, so that's why these evil men, okay, they don't understand that judgment. They don't understand the ways of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. So that's why they're going to get caught up in the world and, and in these perilous times, the beginning of sorrows that we're in, you know, and, and approaching Jacob's trouble and things as such, man. All right, they're gonna get, they're gonna be without, they're gonna be in a bad way, and we're starting to see that judgment, you know, because heavy judgments being laid down here in these latter days, every single day. So Yahweh Bashim Shai is absolutely 100% turning up. Um, okay. What does it say? Um, scriptures say that they shall be in a pitiful case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, roughly paraphrasing. Pitiful case, them that had abhorred my laws. Uh, that's um, Second Ezra 9 and 9. And it says, Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. The water, the water. Yeah, man. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's exactly it. You know, those who are, are uh, doing without the ways of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, and bucking up against the word. That's right. All these scourges are for them, man. And we pray that, you know, as the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, that, you know, we're lacking nothing. Kind of. So I'm going to play a little clip here on the Bilderberg Group. In 1991, uh, even in America, a virtually unknown governor for Arkansas called Bill Clinton was invited to the Bilderberg meeting in Baden-Baden, Germany. Within a year, this guy is successfully running for president of the United States. 1993, another relatively unknown Labour Party Home Affairs spokesman in Britain called Tony Blair was invited to the Bilderberg meeting in Greece, along with his opponent, the Conservative Chancellor, Kenneth Clark, by the way. Within a year, Tony Blair is leader of the Labour Party and, barring a miracle, will become Prime Minister of this country. It's 
Great career move. The last five Secretary Generals of NATO, and I only know it's the last five because that's only as far as I've had time to check back. It's many more than that. The last five Secretary Generals of NATO, Bilderberg's group members. Manfred Werner, Joseph Lunds, Lord Carrington, Willy Clace, the present one, um, Javier Solana, Bilderberger. And indeed, when they were discussing who was going to be the new Secretary General of NATO, it was between three people. Javier Solana, Bilderberg Group, Uwe Ellermann Jensen of Denmark, Bilderberg Group, and Rude Lubbers, the former Dutch Prime Minister, Bilderberg Group. The head of the World Bank and many of his predecessors, James Wolfensohn, the World Bank whose investment policies in what we call the third world have created human and environmental mayhem for, for decades, Bilderberg members. Um hmm. yep, so you get the point. Okay, this was David Eich or Ick, 1996. Now here, fast forward to June 6, 2022, year of our Lord, Amashi, and Yahweh Bashim Yashai, turn it up. And it says, reading from uh, blacklistednews.com, it says, elites from the world of politics, media, big tech, business, and more are in Washington, D.C. for the 68th annual Bilderberg Group meeting. Okay, their first meeting was in 1954. It says, uh, okay, after the Second World War, of course, Second World War. Okay, so let's continue on now. It says, uh, the list of attendees is often secret, but the organizers have confirmed a few people attending this year's meeting, like former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, CIA Director William Burns, Pfizer CEO Albert Borla, former CIA head David Petros, and Senator Kristen Zimena, Democrat from Arizona. The Prime Minister for the Netherlands, Mark Rutte, or Root, is also in attendance, as well as Canada's Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland, who this year who this year ordered banks to freeze the accounts of civil liberties protesters. And so it says, according to the Bilderberg website, the discussion in this year's meeting will include so on and so forth, geopolitical realignment, NATO challenges, China, Indo-Pacific realignment, Sino-US tech competition, Russia, continuity of government and the economy it says disruption of the global financial system disinfo it's the big one right there disinfo energy security and sustainability post pandemic health fragmentation of the dem democratic societies trade and deglobalization and the ukraine All right so it says right here says as can be seen from the list the group plans to discuss behind closed doors a way to combat disinfo right, the idea of censoring disinfo and misinfo has rapidly escalated in recent years particularly through the pen you know this uh this thing that's going on right it says when it has when it was discovered that labeling something as such as a fast way to get it censored the term misinfo quote unquote may seem like it had been a mainstay in mainstream media news coverage for years because of the frequency with which it is used, right? So, it says, but statistics from the GDL, GDELT's online news summary tool, a service that summarizes global news media coverage of a particular topic and contains more than a quarter of a billion records, shows the most shows that most of the growth and the use of this term by the mainstream media occurred around the same time that the thingy thing, all right, that the Crown Vic outbreak was becoming a major story, <whistles> right? So ultimately saying, yeah, this is this term is being used more and more ever since that thing came out, all right? Ever since the Crown Vic came about. So, yeah, they're seeing the numbers here, okay, a rise in the numbers, okay? So, you know, and so pretty much, Yeah, this that's pretty much the point here in this article. Just just going about that, you know. So obviously you get the elites man talking about that how to combat it. All right. 
Um, that's a heavy thing that they were doing, you know, in Canada to um, to freeze accounts and whatnot. You had all those truckers that were protesting, not going down from uh, Canada down to the U.S., transporting goods that were very much uh, heavily relied upon every day, even for uh, the U.S. that was importing a lot of those goods. But that was heavy, man, because you had those people that raised uh, money, uh, I forget how much money it was on that GoFundMe, and they pretty much froze the whole thing, man. Mm -hmm. Con, this is true. But yeah, that that just shows you that, you know, that Esau of Edom, he, his whole goal is to be able to um, to control what you buy, what you spend, and to pretty much have the ability to um, to bar you from society, man, monetarily through his karagma, and that's what that whole complete control is gonna uh that's his end game man that's right so this is uh this is the book of uh, deuteronomy uh 16 and verse uh 18 it says judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates which the adawan yahweh thy power giveth thee throughout thy tribes and they shall judge the people with just judgment Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of the righteous. That's right, so we're supposed to establish this judgment, this justice within within our tribes, within our lands, you know, for our people, God. through this word. God, and what is, um, what is that, I believe that's the book of Ezekiel, where it says, uh, him that rebuketh at the gate. They despise him that speaketh at the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that bore him that speaketh uprightly. That's right. Yeah, man. roughly yeah. paraphrasing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of. So exactly. So, you know, we are to be, you know, prophesying and upholding the words, the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability and that's for our it, people. And all thy gates, speaking of the children of Israel, the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right, man. So, you know, we're supposed to establish that through the word, through this truth, through the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability while we're in this captivity and in this flesh. We're not supposed to go along to get along. All right. We're supposed to keep the words, keep the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and let our people know when we're going off, you know. But just real quick, Papa Kusha, I'm going to bring out the term, the uh, blue letter for rest, definition in the Strong's Hebrew here. Strong's age, 5186. Nachet. Nacheth, second entry, Nata, Nata. Yes, yeah, Locky, I think I brought that out for a second time, but uh, yeah, it's going back in it, you know, to, to make, to stretch out, all right? So, all right, so we're supposed to establish judgment. We're supposed to establish the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua and keep them, all right, to the best of our ability once again, you know? We should not bend. You know, to, uh, to when it comes to it, it says for a gift doth blind the eyes. You know, that gift also going into a bribe. Con, con. So we're not supposed to be enticed or, or incentivized to ch to uh, turn a blind eye, if you will, to turn the turn your cheek. You know, turn the other way. Hey, let this slide. You know, no man, we're supposed to uphold the ways of of our forefathers of these law, statutes, and commandments that are given to our people. We know that Esau of Edom uh, in this world, they're going to try to lure you in by promoting things, giving you free stuff, uh, UBI, creating that, uh, all types of things that they're going to try to incentivize you to do to take the juice, to take the karagma ultimately. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, that's why they're giving that free money for Jamdex and, uh, you know, the central bank's uh, digital currency. They're going to try to incentivize you, you know, mm -hmm. free money. Uh, uh, get rid of some of your debt, this and that, as long as you get with it. Yeah, I believe it's in uh, Wales in the in the UK where now where they're uh, doing a large scale test of uh, UBI. So not only here in, in, in Babylon and in different small settings, you know, small mm -hmm. pilot programs, if you will, you know, sm on a sm much smaller scale in different areas. Uh, you know, there's the UBI is being implemented already. Yeah, and, and it's not a new thing, man. I mean, I remember when that dude, uh, Andrew Yang, was going up for uh, uh, trying to you know, do his presidential uh, presidency campaign, and he was a big, uh, you know, he's a big advocator for UBI. Mm -hmm. God. And that's you know him being from Silicon Valley, you know, so-called uh, millennial type of mindset. 
you know that that's something that's going to continue to be promoted mm -hmm. um, uh, as we move closer, man, to this uh, karagma. But, and, um, and just one one last stop before you bring that up, uh, uh, Baba Gusha, is this uh, just a land back? Say you know all these government, you know, uh, you know programs and whatnot, including uh, you know EBT, including these anybody who's on these these you know who's getting resources from from Esau, man, from the government, all right. Those people also got to worry about this stuff, man. Because when it comes down to it, if he's willing to say, oh, well, you got to get that thingy thing because, you know, hey, EBT is going to be on that thingy thing now, all right, on that karagma. This is going to be linked up to your karagma. So you got to get it. Otherwise, you're off program, mm -hmm. you know, these, uh, you know, these welfare programs, and whatnot, and EBT and things like that, man. So a lot of these people who, who are getting resources and, and aid assistance from, from Esau mm -hmm. and, and, and here in Babylon, America, man. You gotta be careful, man. You gotta watch out and be prepared for this. Yeah, man. It's sort of that, that choice, you know, between a rock and a hard place, you know, uh, mm -hmm. choosing between two evils, so to speak. Mm, kind of. You know, but many people are gonna fold, you know, that being the part of the hour of temptation, man. Okay. Um, but just wanted to, uh, you know, back that that precept up with uh, Ecclesiastes 77, reads, uh, Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. And the heart going into the mind. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right, man. So that gift, once again, going tying into a, a bribe. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, man. We can't. We got to be willing to uh, endure, man, and, and endure affliction, endure this. You know, through the furnace of adversity, man. Through the furnace of affliction, man. That's how we. You know, the believers, man. That's how the hopeful elect are going to be refined. But those who are not willing to endure, man. All right, not willing to suffer. That's how Mashiach Yahweh Shai suffered, man. They're going to ultimately, man, take that thing and they're going to be, you know, getting with Esau's program. So, you know, that's pretty much what they, what it's going to come to, man. So, uh, just real quick, you know, I'll just bring out an article that uh, actually came across through some of the brothers that were posting it, um, you know, and also uh, Brother Ashamath, Shalom to the brother, Fisher Turn Hunter 4, the brothers from the, brother from the, Watchmen on the coast camp. All right, subscribe to the brother, become edified. All those brothers are always putting in work. So, shalom to them, all the brothers. All right. And this is uh, Seattle police arrest the street preacher for reading the Bible, risk to public safety, quote unquote. Right? So, obviously, this guy appears to, you know, like would be, uh, you know, like would be a heathen. All right. But, uh, but hey, you know, gotta just uh, judge righteous judgment, right? So, but anyways, uh, we'll continue on here. It looks like he's preaching that Christianity. All right, so it says, Seattle police arrested a street preacher on charges of being a risk to public safety for reading his Bible aloud at a public park near an alphabet gang pride event. Okay, so it says, uh, Matthew Meineke, who identifies himself as the Seattle preacher on Twitter, was surrounded by Seattle police officers as he was reading his Bible and was subsequently arrested and fingerprinted at a police station before being released. Right. So they knew they, they weren't going to have anything on him. They knew that they, they weren't ultimately going to press charges. They knew that. Right. I mean, he looks like he might be on private property. But the point being, they just wanted to, to hassle him and then and then bring him in and ultimately put him in the system. He'll get his get his picture, get his fingerprints in there, man. All right. So that's ultimately what, what uh, you know, what they want us to do, man. And, and you know, they didn't want to disrupt, you know, what was going on with that event. Right. And they're willing to do this because, you know, this guy's out, out there, you know, bringing out some of the, you know, some of the law, statutes and commandments, possibly bringing out some of the word. All right. And, uh, you know, and ultimately, yeah, man, he became an enemy of, of uh, you know, the locals there and what was going on. Okay, so it says right here, SPD, quote unquote, SPD, Seattle Police Department has enough resources to send 10 police officers to arrest a preacher reading his Bible in a public park because it's such a horrible crime now. Manike wrote on Twitter, right, showing a video of his arrest. All right, so don't need to show the video. We get it. He got arrested, went down, got a mugshot, got fingerprinted, got put in the system. All right, but yeah, they're willing to, um, you know, use those resources, man. All right in order to to you know take care of this guy pull him off you know so that just goes to show that the state of of uh you know 
of Babylon, really, and, and where the narrative is going, where the agenda is going, and how far they're willing to go to, to stand up for wickedness, man. You know? It says it here, yeah. So it says, quote, unquote, yeah. So at this point, we can no longer stand by. The risk that you pose for public safety by remaining here can be mitigated if you leave. It's your last chance, the officer can be said, saying, you know, says, I don't want to leave because I'm not in danger. Yep. So that's what he told the cops. Right. So it says, yeah, I was at the Seattle Center reading the Bible, not aggressively preaching, not stirring people up, not anything. People throwing things, people vandalizing our property. I think about 10 police officers showed up. Right. That's what the pastor told. OK, this uh, journalist here says your job is not to silence me and move me. Why are they so offended by my words? By words. I just believe in using the word of God, quote unquote. Right. So it also says he posted a video showing a protester seizing his Bibles and ripping pages while shouting, get the F out of here. Get your holy water off my ovaries. B, get the F out. Another person uh, shouted at him. And this is a so-called uh, God-fearing, God-loving country, whatnot. They, they use the, you know, the word God in their, uh, even in their national anthem. Mm -hmm. You know, one nation under God. We, we know that this damn devil, you know, he, he really it means himself, man. Esau, you know, he wants to declare himself as God, man, mm -hmm. the power of the earth. That's and right. that's that's the type of Babylonian juice that these people are drinking, man. They, they, they're over there worshiping Esau as God mm -hmm. and his uh, pseudosciences and his power, man. And that's why the Most High, he, he's let him uh, build up his thing just to uh, knock him down, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. So now I continue on here. The last part says, another person shouted at him saying, quote unquote forget about your imaginary fairy in the effing sky mm -hmm. that's right the lack of fear the lack of fear of you how about you shot man god yeah, and that person just you know if they're a jake and whatnot they just condemn themselves man you know blaspheming against the the holy spirit mm -hmm. you know, blaspheming against the most high mm -hmm. god yeah well uh, that's uh these people out here in babylon man they 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 lean upon their own understanding and, and their own strength, man. And they're gonna be shown that they have no power. Okay. Uh, that they're gonna have no way to deliver themselves out of this all out hell that's about to break loose, man. Okay. That's right. And so uh, I bet you many of them are, are gonna be all of a sudden they're gonna be crying out saying, Oh God, help me and that day, man. Yeah. And, and the day that the most high is going to laugh in their calamity, man. That's right. I never ask for anything. Lord, if you get me out of this one. No. You know? Exactly, man. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, man. Okay, so this is, uh, finish up here. And this is, uh, you know, from uh, the book, The History of Susanna, which is in the Apocrypha. But just getting to the point here where, you know, we really got to stand up for this word and trust in Yahweh Shimmy Al Shai. Till death, man. We got to be willing to be martyrs for this truth. Be willing to do it, you know, to hang on to, you know, as the scriptures say, hold fast to what thou hast. So if we have this truth, if we have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in this belief, we have to hold on to that, man. We can't be willing to waver. All right, we got to be able to do what we got to do to stand up for Yahweh Yahweh Shai and to endure for this truth's sake. Okay, whether it be taken to a camp, you know, whether it be taken to a guillotine, man, whatever it is, man. We got to be able to stand up for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai wholeheartedly. This is the book, The History of Susanna, chapter 41, or Salakia, chapter 1, verse 41. Then the assembly believed them as those that were the elders and judges of the people. So they condemned her to death, right? So she was falsely accused, all right, of adultery. And, and the elders, quote unquote, uh, by the elders, quote unquote, of, of those wicked, you know, I should say the wicked elders, okay, of that time. And uh, those men were trying to put her to death. All right. So it says, then the assembly believed them as those that were the elders and judges of the people. So they condemned her to death. Verse 42. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O everlasting power that knowest the secrets and knowest all things before they be. All right. So she's crying out to the heavenly father. Okay. Oh, and, and said, O everlasting power, 
thou knowest the secrets and knowest all things before they be, thou knowest that they have borne false witness against me, and behold, I must die. Whereas I never did such things as these men have maliciously invented against me. That's right. So they bore false witness, man. All right. And they were willing to watch an innocent woman be put to death. Okay. And this woman, Susanna, was willing to take that death. And because she'd rather, you know, be put to death rather than transgress in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yeah, man. Just like the story of the, the woman with the. Uh five sons right in the book of maccabees you know where they didn't want to uh, transgress against the law they didn't uh eat pork they they, they uh denied um the I believe it was uh yeah forget which king it was but that was trying to force them to transgress against the law and she watched her five sons be killed right in front of her and, and all five of the the sons you know they, they said they'd rather uh, die. They'd rather give up the ghost, the, the Holy Spirit, and go back to the spirit world rather than to uh, transgress against the Most High. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. It just says uh, also in Second Maccabees chapter 6, Eleazar. Okay. The story of Eleazar. Or is an older older Israelite man who didn't want to transgress, who wouldn't, who wouldn't eat the, the swine, man. Even when they offered him to, to eat clean meat in front of other Israelites. You know, and say and pretend like it was it was swine. Pretend like it was pork. That way, though, he would encourage others to go off and commit abomination by eating the unclean food. All right, so he was willing to die for that. So this woman here was was willing to die for the truth, rather than transgress or commit adultery. All right. So, so going back to this history of Susanna, chapter. 1 verse 43 says thou knowest that they have borne false witness against me and behold i must die whereas i never did such things as these men have maliciously invented against me and verse 44 and the lord heard her voice and that's the point the lord heard her voice and she was ultimately delivered all right because she was willing to stand up for the truth willing to stand up for the ways of yahweh bashim yahweh shai she was willing to die for this so that's what the same mentality we have to go into this thing with here in these latter days. We have to be willing to die for this and become martyrs for y'all, Bashim, y'all, Shai, if need be. All right, so hang on to this, man. Hold fast to what thou hast. Let no man take thy crown, as the scriptures say. You got anything on it? Nah, that's it. All right, come on. Yeah. So, Adwan uh, Lord willing, that this, letter find, that this lesson was edifying, comforting, exhorting to the hopeful elect of Israel. All right, so the water to the occupant of the aqua tuning in. All right, y'all bashim y'all shab brakatam. Y'all bashim y'all shab brakatam. Peace be unto you in your households. All right, so we're gonna close out as always by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rokakwadash. Once again, we want to give double honor to the head apostles, to the elders, bishops, and teachers of Great Millstone, who rule well and teach well across the four winds with sound doctrine. To the like-minded brothers, the Akim, who are under the umbrella, pushing this truth all in sincerity on one accord, risking your lives and freedoms to do so. Shalom. Peace be unto you in your households. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, the house of David. Shalom. Shalom. Close out. Back. Curse on Babylon. Abad Babal. Abad Babal. Abad Babal. DTA. Soon. Real soon. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Shalom.